Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy early start to the Sunday. Yes, it's a macro Sunday, baby. I'm feeling well under the weather, even though the weather outside in Dubai is absolutely perfect. I've been run down, man. I've been running around this damn town, meeting people in all places of all shapes and sizes. And a lot of people... Hey, that's not funny. Stop laughing. Stop it. Stop it. A lot of people in the gym, actually. Some of you motherfuckers are quite jacked, actually. It's, it's really insane. Um, if Roman and Marius are, li are listening, what the hell, guys? What the actual hell? Total pros. Anyways, today I want to go over some very, very long-term time frame ideas, discuss the topic of is the low in, is the macro low in, as there are actually some statistically based uh, things that I believe are worth, of, worth noting as of right now. Um, in the short term, I won't be discussing that, uh, but Bitcoin has also has obviously hit the 23 spot three sorry 23,300 dollar target that we've been having based off of the two-day time frame um, analysis and also the five-day time frame analysis so I do expect you know a short-term high in um, probably Bitcoin goes for a bit of a consolidation and then sets up for the next move probably early February if I had to guess um, anyways other than that it's time for me to once again humbly request it. If you do find this content valuable, please consider liking and subscribing and herp in the dirt because that is good for your health and also the good old Bybit shill link in the description as well. Actually very important because it does have 0% um, fees on derivative contracts, which I think is rather valuable for more active traders. All right, sweet. So let's jump into it right on over here, starting off with the accumulation and distribution indicator. So this is one of the big um, setups here that I do look at from the macro perspective as essentially identifying when the market is shifting and turning um, going from essentially macro bull to macro bear and vice versa as well in this case I should explain what this uh, what this relationship is basically all of the extreme um, extreme reads met by a slope change on this indicator so I'm talking about uh, for example well this area right here this area right here this area right here and here and potentially here and also the upside here here and here so the slope changes in the extremes have marked off macro shifts in direction in Bitcoin's history and has been pretty much perfect in getting these um, over, since the dawn of time for Bitcoin now if we go into the actual charts themselves uh, you've, you've likely also noticed that I have um, uh, marked off these green vertical bars. These mark off essentially when that is available. So you can see that we do have um, we do have that several times in the past. In this particular chart, I'm not marking off where the slope changes. I think it's in this chart over here. Yeah, it is. And you can see that all of the slope changes in the in in the past in those extreme zones have led to macro bottoms. In fact, the macro bottom was actually already in before that happened. Um, but on a closing basis, it was very, very close. Uh, for example, I'll give you this one over here in 2015. Again, it happens over here. Where's the low? The low is over here in uh, January. But you can see on a closing basis, incredibly close within that. And of course, I would, I would argue from an opportunity cost perspective, this would be the better time to be uh, looking at a potential entry than not. Anyways, um, going back on over here, I wanted to address one more, uh, a couple more things. So in this current iteration, we did see the most dramatic shift and reduction in the current downside slope on the accumulation distribution indicator for the current uh, month of January. This is going to have a serious chance to actually uh, turn to the upside coming into February. And what's also very interesting about this is that CME is actually already doing that. Now, to be fair, CME does not have as much, nearly as much history of uh, as the chart that we just looked at. Also, is floating in the background, by the way. She's like flying like a fucking butterfly. Um, flying like a fucking butterfly. Uh, but you know, that would be, I would say, uh, a good insight that, you know, it's it's going to be very likely possible for spot price action to do that. And typically speaking, CME chart does hold more weight than spot price action. And in the past, it has worked as well, although there's really only, you know, two other times that it's really had a chance to do such things. Um, other than that, the derivative exchanges are also showing positive slopes. Again, not a whole hell of a lot of history here, but it is what it is, right? Here is a bit Mexico and this would be Bybit, you know, again, certainly not as much history as this, but we expect those to kind of lead into something like this as well. So I do think that we could see that as soon as February officially. What's also very interesting about this is something that we spoke about um, basically since, when was this? This was like starting back in April of last year, May to April, uh, yeah, March, April, May of last year. And it is this, anytime that we've seen the cut, oops, ah, damn it, I just goofed again. Um, anytime that we've seen the color change on the accumulation and distribution indicator from uh, from green to red, so that would be this portion right here, 
um, I have gone ahead and measured all those prior times. So there's been one, two, three, four, five times, five times in the past or six times in the past actually, and found that from that point, so in this case, that would be, if I'm just uh, looking at this one right here, be like right here, um, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Uh, I found that, or it was found that the statistics show that from that point to the next major macro low, there's been an average correction crash, whatever the fuck you want to call it, of about 61 spot 34%. What's very interesting about this past one, which again started in uh, April, May, is that from that point to our current low, 61 spot 63%. Now, it's not every day that you see the, you know, it happen exactly on the average correction. And again, we have one, two, three, four. Uh, we, you know, we, we really don't have too many like prior iterations. But statistically speaking, is it reasonable to say that Bitcoin um, has hit a low? Well, those two things coupled with each other alongside other things that we're looking at, um, I think it's at, at the very least extremely likely a major low. And yeah, I do think that we're starting to see some, um, some, some tangible signals that, yeah, it was potentially a macro low as well. Um, you know, as that, as that was hit. Anyways, moving on now, we should go into another thing that I haven't spoken about in months, and it is the uh, hash ribbons indicator. I can't tell you how many fucking messages I've gotten about this indicator, um, but, but let me get rid of that. We don't need volume for this, um, but let me explain first. So there has been a new doing on this indicator or a new uh, thing to talk about the first time since August of last year, or sorry, not even of last year, but of two years ago in 2021. And that is, we have witnessed a blue buy signal confirmed as of, I think this was last week, uh, last week or, or the week before that, like two, maybe two Mondays ago, something like that. Anyways, uh, given that, why is that relevant? Why is that even worth talking about? Well, Prior to 2021, all of the prior blue buy signals on the weekly marked off low points on the chart that Bitcoin never closed below ever again, ever, 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 and maybe a few more ever's there. There's been like, I think, 18 or so iterations here, so it's rather well tested. The only time where this did not hold true, guess where? It's actually the last one, uh, the last one over here um, in August of 2021. Obviously, Bitcoin did close below that uh, $39,000 region. But before that, that condition has actually never really been violated. So I did um, I did think that that was worth bringing up. Um, and in this case, what do you know? We have gotten it yet again right here. So one out of, I think it was like 18, maybe even 19 times, um, you know, let's say still has a strong statistical relationship to, you know, putting in major lows from that point. And in this case, that would suggest that, um, yeah, 17,000 uh, bucks should not be violated again. If that relationship holds true. Again, I'm just looking at statistics. We're not talking about certainties. I'll let the fucking, the perma bulls and the perma bears discuss that. Uh, but what I do trust in is statistics here. So in this case, yeah, I think that that's rather interesting and certainly worth uh, knowing. Um, basically 17,000 bucks, if that relationship holds true, we do not expect Bitcoin to close below there uh, again, actually. Um, that doesn't mean that Bitcoin, you know, here's what I think a lot of people are, well, here's what I think we're actually gonna see. I think we're gonna see a big move to the upside, boom, and then a big crash again, and the crash just puts in a higher low above 17. Maybe it's around low 20s, I don't fucking know, but that's my personal opinion. I'll just kind of give it away right there. Anyways, uh, I'm just going over analysis of this. It doesn't really need to be uh, spoken about yet again. I think the important part is that yes, the weekly blue buy signal has been confirmed, and it is painted in there now, and you know, again, all but one have led to lows that have never been closed below ever again, ever. Uh, again, the, the only the only one where that condition was not true was actually two years ago, August uh, 2021. Um, so fair enough. All right, cool. Let's move on to the next hopium chart over here. Uh, this would be in, in two ways, actually. So first and foremost, and the one that I certainly put a shit ton of more weight on would be the exponential moving average crosses, which I'm specifically looking at the yellow 21 and the green 55. When the shorter period crosses above the higher period, well, that is, in this case, a silver cross. I put a lot more weight on these than fucking death crosses. Let me actually adjust this because I'm OCD. Um, and, uh, and we found that that's happened many a time in Bitcoin's history. We've seen many a time where there has been the silver cross to the upside, which has led to an average move to the upside of about almost 82%. Now, you will notice on the chart, if you're looking at this one and... 
think there's a couple more of them. Yeah, this one over here. There were definitely some failures. Uh, you know, about 12 to 15 percent moves that then that then essentially failed and went significantly lower. And so, I would say that there's a lot of variance in this. In fact, the first standard deviation represents that very obviously right here. But but from that signal given to where Bitcoin is currently at right now, uh, which happened way back on here. We've already seen about a 31% move to the upside. So what does that mean? It means that the likelihood of this of this one being a failure is, I think, rather small. Um, again, not saying that Bitcoin can't pull back. In fact, I do think that Bitcoin's setting up for a pullback uh, here on the daily. Um, but, 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 because this one has kind of already gone above where we expect a lot of the failures coming around, uh, I do think that you know looking closer to the average of these moves is probably more relevant. So let's let's look at what that would be. And, you know, about 81, 82% from current low would put Bitcoin where? About 32,000 bucks. Oh, that's weird. That's right around the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. That's a natural target, actually, based off of the break of this massive falling pizza here as well. Again, not something that I put a whole hell of a lot of weight on, but I do like the confluence there, especially when it confirms my biases, because that's what TA is all about, just reading the tea leaves and seeing which one aligns with what you want to believe most, right? Um, but yes, you know, if we're looking at this from a pattern perspective, which again, I think I look at most patterns as Jesus toast. Jesus toast can be very tasty, but many times not very profitable. Uh, <laughs> anyways, in the short term, we had this falling pizza right here that had a measured move and intended target towards 23 and a half thousand bucks. More importantly, that was in alignment with our five day and two day setups that we were looking at, um, showing statistical uh, relevancies for that region. But if Bitcoin can actually break above the, the, the greater one, which the um, uh, smaller one gives a, you know, uh, gave it an intended target to four, well, that would actually have uh, a much greater um, intended target. Now, some people would say that you target the top side of the, of the pizza. I think that that's like way too fucking egregious and way too aggressive and doesn't work out as certainly as much as many people would have you believe. Uh, but what does work out a lot is is the, the spot five uh, retracement here and maybe even to um, a similar extent, the 618. So between about 32,000 bucks to 38 and a half thousand bucks. Yeah, I do think that's possible for Bitcoin to see, you know, maybe later this year, like Q2 or something like that. Um, but th those would be the major areas, like these two areas right here. Oops, let me just bring it out. These two areas right here would be the major ones where it'd really be considering like, look, if, if you do want to be macro bearish, that'd be a great place for, um, you know, a monthly lower high and come back down into the mid to low 20s. I, in, in fact, that's what I do think probably does happen. So fair enough. Anyways, that's really, really well and far away right now. Um, cool. So we've gotten that. We've gotten that. Let's talk about the last thing here as well. Um, that is going to be on the monthly time frame chart for the monthly stochastic oscillator, of which the monthly stochastic oscillator is going to have a chance, not a chance, but a very high probability to, to cross the upside coming into the end of this month. It will officially do that if Bitcoin closes this month above 18000 bucks, which looks, you know, I would say like pretty likely right now. Uh, almost 5,000 bucks away, to be fair. And also would be would also be confirming one, two, three drives of hidden bullish divergence and also playing out a trend line regression test over here as well. Uh, all of these, by the way, have marked off macro lows. Very interesting, you say. Very fucking interesting indeed. It's like I'm talking to myself, but uh, that would be 2012. That would be 2015. That would be 2019 and potentially even uh, 2023 as well. It, even just the times where it's crossed the upside, not in the bullish control zone, have also marked off uh, mid-cycle major lows like you saw in 2013 and um, and more recently in 2020 and, and even again in 2021 before that uh, all-time high drive. Anyways, in this case, uh, what's interesting about this is that, you know, again, those have all been macro lows. It's correlated with a few other things that we're looking at as well. And at that point, you know, I do think that it'd be relevant to say that we're probably going to see 25,000 bucks in Q1 of 2023. Um, so sometime between now and March. Uh, yeah, I do think that's rather likely. I think that was, you know, much gr uh, more aggressive call, you know, when we spoke about that, like in December, <laughs> but now it probably doesn't look so, so crazy. Um, after that point, you know, very likely a, a major pullback. But, uh, but again, you know, these have marked off macro lows. So, you know, that coupled with the other things, I, I do think that there's a real reasonable reason, is that too redundant, um, to be considering that, hey, you know, that this very well could be it. And, um, and while price action come back down somewhere, you know, close to the lows, relatively speaking, uh, well, statistics and history would have shown that 
it's probably more of an opportunity than not. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video, a little bit longer than usual, but it is a macro Sunday, which no one's actually listening to. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Only the TA nerds are here with me right now. And you know what? You're in the right fucking place, my friend. I'll take your hand, you'll take my hand, and we'll go off into the sunset, and I will be shutting off the video right now before I say more stupid shit. Uh, with that said, take care, much love, and see you hopefully soon.